It's time for something a little dark. Welcome everyone to Walking the Candy Isle. My name is Jeff, and today we are reviewing Nestle's Kit Kat Dark. Surprisingly, I have never reviewed this before. Um, although that said, I don't think it's something that you actually see very often in uh, in stores. Um, I was recently on a very short vacation, you know, get away from the winter for a little while, uh, down in the in in and around the Caribbean sort of area, and uh, I picked this up at. Uh, at the airport, actually, um, and I was like, you know what? Back home, I I just don't see the Kit Kat dark. I know that it exists. I know that it's around. Obviously, it's a product that would exist, the the dark version of Kit Kat. But uh, but yeah, it's it's interesting. To note, two other dark products uh, that I just wanted to bring to light. One, Kit Kat recently announced a new Kit Kat duos that's mint and dark, which just launched. I have yet to see it on store shelves here where I live, but um, hopefully you've had a chance to see that. And that's a dark chocolate base with like a, um, like a mint over top. Anyway, it's part of the duos line of, uh, you know, mixing and matching it. Like they have done with the duos, what did they do a little while ago? Milk, n milk and dark, or I don't know what it was. Anyway, milk and white, that was what it was. Anyway, I think I reviewed that. This is just the straight dark chocolate. And then, the, so the other thing to note is that Kit Kat actually is just relaunching dark right now, or right now, it's already launched in uh, Japan. And I expect that the dark line will be um, re revamped uh, internationally. Um, very soon. So I'm recording this, it's sort of early 2020. In uh, the fall of 2020 in Japan, Nestle launched the new Kit Kat Dark there, which is made from, uh, it's with no, no actual sugars, just no, no processed sugars, just natural sugars. Um, 70% less sweetener. They've got a new, basically they found a new way to make an artificial sweetener out of the pulp of the uh, cocoa bean. So the, the pulp from the cocoa fruit, uh, which is usually a waste product, they've now found a way, which has natural sugars in it, they found a way to like compress that pulp and then make it into a powder, which ultimately they're using that as the sweetener in the new, uh, in the new Kit Kat darks that they're selling in Japan. And I think they're calling it Kit, uh, what are they calling it? Chocolate fruit or fruit fruit chocolate or something like that. I don't I don't know what they're calling. I can't remember. I'm sorry, guys. Anyway, I'm sure we'll learn more about that at some point in the future. This is the classic one. Um, I believe this is 70% dark, but I'm not sure. This packaging is all in uh, Spanish, Portuguese, maybe. I don't. I don't. I don't know what that. I think I'm not really entirely sure. I will say here though, it does have uh, as what is that? As you as zero acute. I don't know how to say that word, guys. I'm sorry, but uh, that's the, there's your sugars. There's 20 grams of sugar right in in here. Um, so anyway, this is the classic. Theoretically, the new version of Kit Kat Dark would be zero there, right? Oh, looks like it broke. Hey, break me off a piece of that Kit Kat bar. Yeah. That's okay. It, I brought it back from, uh, you know, from a vacation. So it's not a, not, not crazy unexpected that it would break or get a little mucked up. Um, but you know, it's still a Kit Kat guys and it still smells pretty sweet. Ooh, when you bring it up close, it really smells like it actually really does smell like dark chocolate. It doesn't look that dark though. I'll say. It's a very like light, like almost a milk chocolatey brown here. Let's give it a taste. Mm. Snappy. Yeah, I mean, that's dark. But, you know, real testament to the construction of Kit Kats in general. What a great bar, right? The um, even for someone like me, who's not a huge fan of dark chocolate, I don't know if this is seventy. It doesn't it doesn't seem that doesn't seem that strong, or maybe it's just because there's a lot of other stuff going on inside here. You know the wafers and everything. Um, it's it's very good. 
it's still very good. Even someone for like me who is not a huge dark chocolate fan, this turned out pretty well. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> I think I've been reviewing too much um, chocolate that's slightly <laughs> expired lately. Because I'm just like, oh, the wafers have like a nice crispy snap to them. I think that's the way wafers are always supposed to be. <laughs> just my recent past experiences have not been so great with them. Still, guys, it's a Kit Kat, you know? It's got everything you like about Kit Kats, only dark chocolate. So are you a dark chocolate fan? Um, yeah, if you are, get this, definitely. Get it now while you can, and then get the new one when the new one comes out. That's my suggestion. I think this definitely is a really serviceable bar. Um, if you're a hardcore dark chocolate, you know, fanboy though, are you going to want something a little more gourmet? I mean, accessible yet more gourmet, like along the lines of like Godiva or Lint, you know, both of which are brands that you can more or less find everywhere. Um, I don't know. I mean, maybe those are things that, maybe those are things you'd go for because this is still kind of like a candy bar. You know, but <laughs> but I think that um, if you're a um, casual dark chocolate fan, this is definitely something that you might want to look into. Highly recommended, um, even for someone like me who's not the hugest dark chocolate fan. Walking the Candy Isle is going to rate the Kit Kat dark. I'm going to rate it a solid four out of five. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. I appreciate your time today with me. Feel free to uh, leave me a comment, leave me a like. Um, you know, all that sort of stuff down below, and I will catch you next time. Later.